So, I need to answer the question, can an EV handle my hiking needs? And yes, I need to answer this question because I'm getting rid of this car. My beloved Kia Sorento that I've had for eight years, and that's more than twice as long as I've had any of my previous cars, which was an Audi A4. Oh my God, that put me in credit card debt again after I had worked so hard to get out of it. And, um, and then a Subaru Forester, which was fine, but it had a four speed automatic transmission. That was crap, I have to admit. EV technology has gotten to the point where um, it can handle a lot of needs. And for my weekend warrior type of hiking expeditions, it can handle it. And I have a dirty little secret. I have this behind me. I have that Honda HRV completely gas engine, which will be just fine for like longer hikes. So yeah, we're cleaning this out. And uh, this is going to take a last trip out to Pennsylvania where I will be collecting my new Kona Electric, Hyundai Kona Electric. And we'll see, can an electric vehicle handle my hiking needs? I love this thing, my road trip companion. We went on so many road trips together. A few weeks after I bought this, I took it to the White Mountains where I almost died on Mount Washington because I was so exhausted. Right now I'm cursing myself for... Uh, gorilla gluing this mount on the dashboard and I actually only did this a few months ago thinking you know that the relationship between me and this car is gonna last forever after all the car was completely paid off it gave me zero issues whatsoever so there's no real reason to get rid of it right the poor fuel economy really got to me 15 to 17 miles per gallon in the city with the dog of a V6. The year 2023 would introduce a used EV tax credit where EVs that qualify under the sale price of $25,000 would receive a non-refundable federal tax credit. And it's that financial incentive that really cemented my decision to go EV for good. So it's exact situations like these where it's ideal to get an EV, just sitting in McDonald's drive-thru, wondering why the minivan with like five kids in the back couldn't just go and order inside because this is going to take forever. And I'm slowly traveling along this drive-thru, just putting carbon into the atmosphere, where in an EV you could just be chilling. I mean, it's so wasteful. That's... and like... And it's just human nature to do this because McDoubles are delicious. Thank you. See? See how quick that was? So it was time to go car shopping. I knew from early on that I wanted a used Hyundai Kona electric. I figured with my amazing negotiation skills, I'd put the filter at $30,000 max and negotiate my way down to the $25,000 price threshold. The one I'm looking at now is a beautiful ultimate trim that I found for $28,000. However, after I pleaded with the salesman to lower it to $25,000 so I could save a further $4,000, he kind of laughed me off a lot and uh, that didn't work out. So. I had to expand my radius for my search, and eventually I did find something, a 2020 model for just under $25,000. However, it was the base trim and it was located all the way in State College, Pennsylvania. I didn't know much about the place, but after looking into it, I decided I wanted to go. It was a little over three hours away in a mountainous area, and I figured the return trip back would be a perfect testing ground to see if it was fit for my hiking needs. All right, so let's clean this out. Let's see. There's a lot of crap, a lot of memories. Pokemon book. What the? What is this doing here? Whatever. Do electric cars still use jumper cables? No idea. Well, that's kind of gross. How long has that orange been down there? Ugh, I can't... And I try to lift it up, it kind of disintegrates. Ugh, gross. But I'll, I'll get it eventually.
Alright, I'm just gonna put in just enough to get to the dealership. I ain't giving them any extra gas. Okay, last gas fill up of the Kia Sorento. It's kind of sad, but I'm not gonna miss uh, putting gas in this car. I'm probably going to put gas in my wife's car quite a bit. I mean, I will road trip with that one for longer trips, but um, last time in the Sorento. We got some beautiful country out here in, I don't know where, Pennsylvania. Whoops. And uh, there's one reason why I really want an EV. I mean, this feature isn't exclusive to EVs, obviously, but lane keep assist. Once you try it, it's hard to go back. Like, taking this video right now, I'm endangering my life. I've been obsessed with electric cars for a while now, and I do not have a need for a seven-seater anymore. I just don't. I mean, some of the people I, were, I was carrying around with, the nieces and nephews, are now old enough to drive, and there are more cars in my family and extended family. I don't need to be carrying this much weight, extra seats. As I'm going up and down these mountainous roads, I'm hitting the brake pedal a lot, and at, at least in the Kona Electric, the regen paddle that'll slow you down so you, it's not as t it's not so terrifying you don't feel like you're going down a bobsled and uh you get a little more energy in your battery pack so yeah win-win situation anyway it says we're five miles away the town is called state college it didn't really click to me that there would actually be a university there and then and then i later found out that penn state was there Hello everyone, so I'm here just outside of State College, Pennsylvania, about to collect the Kona EV. I cleaned this car out really nice. Uh, I spent the last uh, couple days cleaning it out methodically and wiping everything down because like I said before, I really care about this car. There are definitely things that are going to be a downgrade. Space for one, in the back seat and the trunk. Uh, space in the back here and just like everything just feels better and of course the materials are a lot nicer here soft touch everything these nice appointments so I'm basically trading in luxury and refinement for technology I'm doing half a day's work at the hotel today and then around one o'clock when I can duck out I'll go and get the car after collecting the car, here's the hiking capabilities testing plan. I'm gonna head out to Mount Nittany just to get a little exercise because I'm gonna be in the car a while. A more serious test of the car will be in this Bear Meadows natural area where I'll just be putzing about the gravel roads and seeing if the car is comfortable handling the pitches and inclines. To be honest, I don't do anything hardcore, so really I just need to make sure that it can get me to my hiking destinations with as few charging stops as possible. So a more serious test will be to see if it can make it home the approximately 200 miles back to Maryland. So as you can see the size comparison, the Svento is much taller. It's, uh... I think it's just about as wide. The cone actually has like a hot hatch kind of stance. <laughs> but you know what? This is all that I need, so. Well, this is a Kia. Just under eight long years. Please treat your new owners well. It's been real. I'll always love you. I'll always cherish the memories I've had with you. So, goodbye Kia, Sorrento. You're really good. So um, I'm here at Mount Nittany now, my first hiking stop. And I'm doing this mostly for exercise, just cause I'm gonna be spending a total of seven hours in the car over two days. But yeah, it's a handsome looking car, look at that. Yeah, I'm gonna spend a moment here just like setting up the car for me a little bit. I, the infotainment, I have no idea what the hell is going on. But yeah, it looks good. It has a tall profile and it feels pretty tall. Um, in the back, it can seem pretty small, but um, I moved the seat up. With the seat moved up to where I would keep it, it seems all right. The, the kids that'll be in the back, they'll survive. Don't worry, they'll, they'll be all right. 
Hey, what's up? So cool view. I, there's like the Penn State Stadium behind me. I'll try to get as uh, good a shot as I can. But um, but yeah, I collected the car. Everything went smoothly. So I actually did had spent very little time at the dealership. I just had to sign, sign, sign. Yeah, it's nice here. I'm not gonna spend too much time here. I'm just trying to exercise a little. Driving here was fine. It was just through the city. And uh, I don't know what it is with college girls these days, but apparently they're out of shirts because they all just wear sports bras on these hot days. But yeah, I'll probably go and see one more overlook and head back. And then I do have to go into town and buy something unexpectedly. Apparently, uh, the way to connect Android Auto is with the USB-A and I just have USB-C. But, you know, pretty good climbing. This is a much better Vista. Beautiful Vista. I believe some would consider that nightmare fuel. As opposed to National Forest where they barely blaze anything, this is just like really spelled out for you. They don't want these kids to get lost, I guess, and every single intersection has one of these. Uh, seems like overkill, but you know, if it, it's better to err on the side of safety, I guess. All right, so I'm actually at the uh, summit, I guess you could call it, but this is the tallest point of the whole mountain at 2,040 feet. Obviously, it's not the most prominent of summits. Anyway, this is known as the Northwest Overlook. So once I get to the next overlook, which is known as the Nittany Mall Overlook, I'm gonna take a left and then go back to the car. Ahead of me is a Tesla. Is it weird that I feel a kinship with that guy? It's like, I am part of the electric brotherhood with you, my friend. Even though I'm in a Kona and not that many people know that there is an electric version. Damn, what a pretty lake. So unfortunately, because I didn't bring the correct mount, I couldn't get footage of me putzing about the country roads as planned. Needless to say, though, it was just fine. I mean, the weather is nice. West Virginia in the winter, that's another story. And maybe it'll happen. We'll see. Yeah, I've decided to stop at a charger just in case. Uh, I'm, I've been doing 72 for a while at 3.3 miles per kilowatt hour. That was as low as 2.6. I've got the driver only air conditioning on because it is pretty hot. Oh, see that's why lane, lane keep assist is so great. I wasn't paying attention. So even though the range estimator on the Kona said I had plenty of charge to get all the way home, I decided to make a charging stop anyway. It was my first ever EV trip. I was a little nervous. Honestly, seeing 200 miles on the range estimate gave me re legit range anxiety. So here I am at the Electrify America station where my first attempt with the first handle did not work. After fiddling with it, I was convinced that the problem was actually with the credit card tap functionality. After it trying another handle and inserting the credit card, I got it to work and it was charging and it was a hallelujah moment. All right, cool, that actually worked. It's actually charging. So anyway, this is charging, it feels pretty cool. Oh, what happened? I guess that's what happens when it charges. There was a little indicator there. I don't know how to get it to come back up. But the car is off right now. So it says 26 minutes left. Yeah, w one thing I'm liking a lot about this experience is that it, a lot of times during road trips, you wanna take breaks, but your only options are like gas stations. And for a lot of gas stations, you have to be at the pump or maybe there's like a few spaces in front of the actual like convenience store, but like you don't wanna occupy the pump when you're done. So maybe you don't have all the things you wanna do. You don't have your podcast selected. You don't have like, you know, your drinks ready or whatever. So, I mean, that's one thing I really like about this EV experience. Okay, I'm getting 70 kilowatts, cool. 
So I use this time to get my drinks ready, my podcast ready, and sort out my clothes. I wonder why I decided to take this pair of jeans hiking. And I finish that up. I'm able I use the restroom really quickly, but then I just chill back in the car. I have about 15 minutes left to go, which is fine. But I can see this getting tedious, honestly, if I had to do this more than two or three times getting someplace. For that, maybe I'd use a gas car. However, I soon find myself back on the road through the beautiful Pennsylvania countryside. It's not long after that I start to see some more familiar roads. Beautiful, iconic Breezewood, Pennsylvania. The gateway to the Midwest United States from Mid-Atlantic. World famous. All right, I'm here at my favorite rest stop. When I need to go somewhere northwest, I will um, I will always go to this rest area, which is South Mountain. Um, there's my car, and uh, really liking it. Okay, fun fact about South Mountain: in 2002, there was a there were a pair of snipers, John Allen Muhammad and uh, Lee Boyd Malvo. They killed, I think, 14 people in the D.C. area and then another five people as they were crossing the country. And um, they were caught at this very rest area, South Mountain Rest Area. Uh, by the way, I'm not going, going to go into the details of the case. There's plenty of good material out there. But um, their license plate had been broadcasted. Um, but since they lived out of their car, they, they had no idea that they were wanted. So they were just sleeping in their car when, like, a refrigerator technician just spotted them. He had been listening to the radio and heard the plate, and he was shocked, obviously, to see them sitting in their caprice, and they were caught shortly thereafter. Anyway, so for that reason, a very notable rest stop for me. Um, but we're going to continue on our journey. All right, made it home. Thankfully, uh, I'm a little tired right now. I'm probably going to slip into a bath and eat my Wendy's. But anyway, we came back home with 43 miles left. Consumption was 3.4 miles per kilowatt hour the whole trip. And the cockpit was nice and it was just enjoyable. But anyway, uh, so I'm gonna take a bath, um, signing off for today. I'll recap a little bit later, just uh, let me relax, all right. So as you can imagine, since I'm getting a sub 25,000 electric car, I ain't shelling out big bucks for uh, sophisticated charging. I don't have a 240 volt plug, like I have a gas dryer. So basically I take the level one charging cable, which comes with this nice little block here, and it'll tell you if the outlet is good. This kitchen outlet for me is good, but two other outlets kind of along this wall. I was originally planning to use this outlet and to run it out this window, but actually I find that this window is better because I'm gonna have to deal with Right now I have this piece of cardboard here to keep the window from crushing the cable. But I have this gap, so I'm gonna have to engineer something to get into that. I'm thinking a piece of cardboard folded several times. Okay, so the driveway's free, so I'm gonna go ahead and charge now. And we just go into the car and confirm that it's charging. And... Yep. Only 29 hours to full. Not terrible, because I don't really plan on going anywhere for a little while. Do you know how suction cups on mounts kind of suck? Well, here's a good tip, Gorilla Glue. So I'm Gorilla Gluing on my mount. Um, but let me talk about my uh, first few days with the Kona. So I've spent a few days now with my Kona EV, and I'm immediately satisfied with my decision. I quickly determined that this was destined to happen, because I actually have a Kona bicycle just by chance. And just to make the analog complete, I went out and bought some Kona coffee. I really firmly declare that it's the amount of idling that we do that makes owning an EV so advantageous. 
The instant torque makes moving from a stop immediate, which is great for things like drive throughs traffic jams, and other situations where you're just waiting around in your car, like for family to come out or like uh, doing a drug deal or something. This car is this car is extremely zippy, I have to say, which is great for passing maneuvers and quickly getting to high speeds. But it's not all roses because there are some dislikes I have with the car. First and foremost is this dashboard display in normal mode, which is how I prefer to drive in the city because eco mode is quite frankly a little too passive. It keeps showing me the estimated range in front of me and despite how customizable this dashboard is, uh, you can't change that and I really hate that. It's gotten on my nerves enough that I'm actually just driving around in eco mode just so I could get the speed display in front of me. And yes, you could get the speed on the right-hand side menu, but, I, but I'd but i like to see other things with that, quite frankly. Long story short is that I don't need the range constantly in front of me because I always have a general idea of how much range I have. The brake pedal's a little weird, I'll be honest. Uh, I'm getting used to it and I'm adjusting my braking style. It's fine actually for normal driving, but like for really low speed situations like shopping centers or like in a driveway, it could get to the point where it like does a whole lot of nothing and then just grabs you all of a sudden and you all lurch forward. But again, I've actually adjusted my behavior to avoid that. I've submitted this to a battery te of tests. I've gone on the highway at a variety of speeds. Shopping centers are much easier to navigate towards since uh, the size and good turning radius make it very easy to fit into parking spots and just get around pedestrians and other cars. Um, it's also just fun to toss around. Dale. That being said, I really love this EV. Yeah, there are things I miss about my Sorento. It definitely had a lot more space. Like, I always kept my hiking kit box in the trunk in my old Sorento so that I could always go on a hike. But now I just keep the box on my porch and I have to put it in because um, without doing that, a Costco run becomes impossible. Finally, i just like to say that I do not personally want to in any way disparage oil and oil products and i'm actually being serious i actually graduated a history major and yeah it, yeah part of that had to do with the fact that after dropping out of engineering school it was one of the only majors i could do where i could graduate in four years still um but i learned a lot you know without oil and petroleum products the industrial revolution and the foundation for today's world would not exist so i just say like please don't be disparaging towards oil I mean, yes, it needs to be phased out in a lot of applications, but it still has a lot of applications. For instance, if you're in a rural environment especially, I mean, you depend on oil, and I don't think anyone should have the right to take it away from you. Like, I personally still have a gas car, and for me, after a long hike, there's just a feeling of safety when your gas engine roars to life, and you might be cold and broken, but like this... Uh, this car with this roaring gas engine will keep you warm, it will keep you safe and get to, and get you to where you need to go. If it's not convenient to own an EV, in my opinion, don't do it. You shouldn't have to rearrange your lifestyle to accommodate your transportation. Additionally, there's the high initial cost. Even the cheapest and smallest EVs are sold for the same price as gas cars that are like much bigger and more accommodating. But, like, if you wanted an EV in, like, family, like, you know, like, mid-size suv size territory, then you're looking at luxury car prices. So if it's not financially convenient to own an EV, just don't do it. For me, in 2023, with the used EV tax credit and the fact that EVs can go 200 plus miles and can accommodate my, like, the majority of my hiking trips within about, like, 500 miles of here in Maryland then I figured why not go for it. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Yes, an EV can handle my hiking needs, at least the one hike I took in ideal conditions. With that said, thank you very much for watching.